So I'm call it to order. We're all going to stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. The Republic, which is 10, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will consider a vote to enter into executive session under RGL section 42465A2. Do I have a motion to do that? I so move. I have a second. Second. Can I have a vote via roll call, Mariah? Holly Allen? Aye. Ed Bowen? Aye. Jenna Porter? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Absent so far. Um, Patrick McHugh. Aye. All right, so I am going to meet everyone over in executive session. All right, Bye. see you all there. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone can hear me. We are reconvening an open session and I have to report on votes that were taken in, in executive session. Uh, there's two voted on two collective bargaining motions. The first motion failed. The members in favor were Polly Allen and Jana Porter. Members opposed were Rita Canahan, Ed Bowen, and Patrick McHugh. The second vote passed three to two. The members in favor were Rita Canahan, Jana Porter, and Patrick McHugh. The members opposed were Polly Allen and Ed Bowen. I'll consider a, a motion to seal the minutes of executive session. You have a motion. No, second. Second. Mariah. Uh, roll call. Polly Allen. Ed Bowen. Hi. Jana Porter. Hi. Rita Kenahan. Hi. Patrick McHugh. Hi. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? I so, so move. I have a second. Second. So, roll call, Mariah, please. Polly Allen. Aye. Ed Bowen. Aye. Jana Porter. Aye. Rita Kenahan. Aye. Patrick McHugh. Aye. There are no objections from the committee. I'd like to uh, move up 9.1, Portsmouth High School reopening discussion with Superintendent Kenworthy, Assistant Superintendent Veris, High School Principal Amaral. I don't know if Paige Kerwin Clare is in the audience. I, I heard there may be a rumor she was coming. Is she here, Tom? Uh, yeah, no, she was scheduled, Mr. Q, um, and was uh, looking to, to, to join us, but she had a family emergency today, so she's not able to join us. No problem. I didn't want to exclude her. Is there any objections from my committee to move up 9.1? Not hearing any. I'm going to do that. So I'd like to welcome uh, our, our guest, Superintendent Tom Kenworthy. Tom, congratulations on your appointment. I haven't got to speak to you since then. Thank I guess you. I guess you've been busy. Um, you know, I've, I've uh, been able to uh, communicate with you a few times, a handful of times through the years, and, and you really, uh, uh, they really did a great job in hiring you, and they're lucky to have you. So um, I really uh, wish you the best of luck. Also, we have Elizabeth Viveris in here. 
and she is the assistant superintendent. And I haven't had the pleasure to meet you, but everything I've read in the paper is like you're the absolute best. And uh, I know that I talked with Rita Canahan uh, on our committee, and she says you're wonderful also in your in their discussion. So I wish you all the luck, and it's a pleasure to have you here. I appreciate that. Thank you for having us this evening. Got it. And and Joe Amaral is here, the principal. Hello, Joe. I make Joe say hello. Is he saying it? Trying. Hi, 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 Joe. Hi. Joe, I've known Joe my whole uh, a long time. We played on the same fields as kids. Uh, Joe, I, I welcome you here. That's and, right. Yep. Yeah, and uh, we have uh, kids that are the same age, uh, so uh, we've always been able to see each other. And I know you have a very easy job over there as principal uh, of Portland. <laughs> so uh, I, I thank you for coming. You're welcome. Nice to see you again, Pat. You too. Okay, so the Portsmouth High School reopened discussion 9.1. Um, I think I'd like to start with my superintendent. Um, would you just like to introduce what we're here to do today with, with, with our, our friends from Portsmouth? Well, I think um, you've been asked to talk about the reopening. Thank you so much, uh, Tom, Liz, Joe, and Paige. If you don't mind if I use your first names, please use my first name, Lori. Um, and I, I think that there were some uh, issues to iron out regarding the reopening um, that impacted our little Compton families who chose distance learning. And I, I think those have all been um, smoothed over and I think it, things are going really well. Um, every now and then I do send a blast out of Parents Square to our Portsmouth High School families and I welcome families to reach out to me and no one has done anything in the past uh, four weeks or so. So thumbs up, Portsmouth High School. Um, and it's a really good opportunity with the new superintendent and a new assistant superintendent and also Paige and, and Joe um, to just sort of you know, um, talk about some issues in the past that I believe your freshman academy has definitely um, mitigated a lot of support issues for all entering freshmen, not just Little Compton's, Woman McMahon kiddos, but also Portsmouth Middle School kiddos. I had the pleasure of working um, in another district that implemented a freshman academy uh, because students were um, finding it difficult to transition to such a large school or to go from being the oldest in, in a building at 14 to being the youngest with uh, um, 18 and 19 year olds. And the fact that Portsmouth, uh, this is your third year, I believe, the, the fact that you implemented this a few years ago, I think has taken care of a lot of concerns that parents have. Uh, during the transition, they, at, at Portsmouth High, our students now have their own guidance counselor rather than several guidance counselors splitting the freshman class. There's uh, just one dedicated to the freshman class. Also, the freshman class has a dean, if I'm not mistaken, or um, an assistant principal. Um, there's been more vertical teaming and vertical alignment than ever uh, we, uh, around Spanish. And I do have something from Kelly Cole um, to read. She couldn't make it tonight. Um, Wilbur McMahon is now using the Avansmos, am I saying that correctly, Liz <laughs> or Joe, online platform yeah. as our new curriculum for our Spanish one, our academic Spanish. This platform is the same platform that is currently being used at Portsmouth High School. Therefore, the current eighth grade students are working in sync with the Spanish one students at the high school in terms of content, sequence, and, sp and pace. If they enter Spanish 2 um, the following year at the high school, they'll be familiar with the performance of the platform and will be able to seamlessly navigate the Spanish 2 content. So this is the first year we purchased that platform so that we are perfectly aligned with Portsmouth High School. Um, Kelly Cole, our Spanish teacher, met with the Portsmouth High School Foreign Language Department at the beginning of the pandemic and at the end of well, the shutdown and at the end of the school year in, in June to create a scope and sequence with the Spanish 1 and Spanish 2 teachers. 
Kelly um, was able to communicate where the Wilbur students ended in terms of content and where the PHS teachers can begin in the fall with the incoming freshmen. The schedule is now also in sync with the high school. The current eighth graders are meeting for academic Spanish class four times per week for the entire year. This is significantly more than the exposure that the students at Wilbur McMahon, uh, that, that the students at Wilbur McMahon had in the past. Uh, Ms. Cole, Senora Cole feels very confident that the new uh, Advancemos program, consistent, um, the consistent communication with the PHS staff and the increase in exposure time that Wilbur McMahon students will be prepared to take the Spanish two course when entering the high school. Thank you to all who have helped our Spanish program grow. So that is from Kelly Cole. So thumbs up from our Spanish teacher regarding um, the wonderful vertical teaming going on between her and uh, the world language teachers at Portsmouth High. So, um, so I just want to give Joe the floor, if you would, you know, Mr. Amaral. Um, you see not sure. shy, so uh, an invitation to take the floor and talk about um, the Freshman Academy and how it has mitigated a lot of transition issues for all ninth graders, not, not right. just the McMahon kids who go from a very tiny cohort of 30 students in their class to a class of 230 or so. Well, you mentioned some of those transitions, and I think the last time I was there in, in Wilbur uh, McMahon School at a school committee meeting, we were there talking about the advent of the Freshman Academy and there were a lot of questions. And one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that we were meeting the needs, not only the social emotional needs to make sure kids felt good about being in a new environment, especially after being in one school for pretty much eight or nine years mm -hmm. and how they can transition and feel a part of the school. And the good news is that we not only have students coming in from Wilbur McMahon, but we have students coming in from Middletown, Newport, Tiverton, uh, Mount Hope, uh, as well as the incoming students from Portsmouth Middle School, all coming together for the first time. And we felt the transition year, like ninth grade, is, is vital. And mm -hmm. we, the Portsmouth School Department has dedicated uh, many resources, such as their own, uh, our own assistant principal in charge of Freshman Academy, to deal with all issues, primarily of all freshman needs. So whether it be um, students who are having troubles with uh, a particular course, uh, students having um, concerns about getting involved, their social emotional needs in terms of making new friends, etc. And also a, a, a dedicated school counselor that's just for freshmen. So I don't think there's too many of the school districts in the state, if any, at least in the general area, that's dedicating an entire administrator and an entire um, a school counselor for just the freshman transition. Because we figure if we can create a strong base in the freshman year, they'll be able to excel and be able to pick their path uh, along their high school career. Um, we continue to try to figure out at the beginning of the year by giving students the PSAT 9, which is a new investment in the last two years, to try to get a barometer of where students are coming in from all these different schools. And we review that data and we work with our MTSS team to try to come up with supports for those kids that struggle a little bit. This year with the support of uh, Assistant Superintendent Viveris and uh, Dr. Kenworthy, we're able to also add to our array of a professional or a literacy, uh, in addition to our literacy support teacher, an additional math support teacher. Because we recognize that some students uh, struggle with some of their basic math facts and they're, they're needing that extra support in math. So we, we were able to shovel some resources to the math department to be able to create a math interventionist, which is new this year, as well as a literacy interventionist to support the whole child in their learning and development. Um, our MTSS program is, is, is strong off the block. Uh, we review, the, what you asked about what's special about Freshman Academy. In high schools, most of the time, unlike K through eight, there is not always a common planning time across departments to meet and discuss student performance. Well, in Freshman Academy, we've carved out a time for the core area teachers to be able to meet not just once a week, but every other day for 82 minutes to discuss students with their guidance counselor and their principal uh, to be able to uh, see, make sure the kids don't fall through the cracks. Now, I think we have a lot, a lot of conversation with parents and they enjoy this kind of uh, feedback. Because oftentimes as a parent and even as a student, you go to a high school with 
uh, over 900 kids. And it's so easy to get lost when you're first there. And then you're playing catch up the whole time. Having teachers discuss students' work, discuss students' social emotional development with their guidance counselor, and then tearing those kids off into different programs or providing different supports is critical to their success in their freshman year. And that's what Freshman Academy is. That is the root of, of success in the last three years. And we've seen more kids uh, be successful and be able to take what they need uh, going forward. So we're very proud of that program. Uh, we're gonna continue that program because I think it really is a model for what, um, uh, what many high schools should be doing in the, in the ninth grade transition year to ensure that the maximum number of students have access to opportunity and success in their high school years. Was there a, another particular Thank you. topic? Thank you, Joe. Okay. Thank you so much, yeah. Joe. Thank you, Joe. I just want to let the uh, 15 people in attendance, if you have a question for uh, the Portsmouth uh, administration, just hit your raise your hand button and I will see that. And uh, we can ask these folks uh, some questions uh, that you might have. Um, I'd just like to go to, to Superintendent Kenworthy. Um, would you like to say a few things, Tom? Sure. Thank you, Mr. McHugh. Um, so thanks again for having us this evening. Um, you know, uh, as mentioned, I, I transitioned last year in January to the superintendent role um, after being assistant superintendent here for a number of years. Um, you know, I had this uh, great transition plan that I laid out and uh, I was starting to uh, reach out and, uh, you know, my goal was to meet with, you know, every con constituency group and, you know, between school faculties and, uh, parent organizations and different groups. And, you know, uh, by the timeline, I, you can see where I'm heading here. I was just kind of uh, in the middle of that uh, when, when COVID hit, but um, certainly uh, reaching out to the little Compton community was on my list uh, and we all got sidetracked with other things, obviously. So uh, thank you for the invitation to be here this evening. Um, we certainly uh, value our relationship with, with little Compton in the Portsmouth community. You know, it's, I think we're going on over 20 years now. And uh, you know when when students from Little Compton you know transition to Portsmouth High School, we consider you know we consider them and their families um, you know part of our extended Portsmouth family. So uh, you know regarding uh, reopening, um, you know we've been working through uh, a lot as as has every uh, community. Um, you know I know I have a collaborative relationship with um, Superintendent uh, Dias Mitchell. Um, we're on, uh, in the East Bay, we have our own separate work group that we meet together regularly. So, um, you know, I, I'm able to keep up with everything happening there. Uh, so I know that you are, you are fully open um, for all grades in Little Compton. Uh, we were able to do that in Portsmouth up through sixth grade, um, but uh, starting in seventh grade for us, and then obviously at Portsmouth High School, where, you know, Little, little Compton students would be part of that community. Uh, issues of spacing and proper distancing uh, for students um, was a little more challenging for us. So uh, currently in grades seven through 12 right now, we are still operating under a hybrid uh, model. So students, um, as I'm sure you're well aware, are able, if they choose to attend uh, school in person two days a week, and then they distance learn for the other three days. And, um, and then obviously, um, like, like all communities, any family that chooses full distance learning uh, is able to have that opportunity. Uh, last evening, we had a school committee uh, meeting in, uh, in Portsmouth. I know um, it's always great to see Mrs. Kingham there. And I did provide an update on, we had sent, once we were kind of fully transitioned into our reopening, we did send out a survey a couple weeks ago. So I was able to share some of that feedback. Again, we know we still have things that we're trying to iron out. Things certainly are not going perfect, but I think they are going as, as well as can be expected at this point. Uh, we know where our challenges lie, you know, whether it be in, in the in-person or the distance learning, um, and certainly for teachers trying to manage uh, both at the same time. Um, so, you know, we're just continuing to work with our staff and our families on, on working those things out. Um, we certainly appreciate the feedback that we've received on that. And then I did uh, just clarify, uh, you know, again, regarding grades uh, seven through 12, uh, right now, uh, we, we are not able to, to fully, uh, you know, invite all in-person students back, but we are working, 
you know, at, at the high school, we've already started the meetings to identify uh, what, you know, the, the commissioner keeps referring to as those vulnerable populations. Uh, so, um, you know, students who, who are struggling for whatever reason, um, we have a few weeks under our belts now. Um, so we will start identifying, um, and, and our hope is uh, at the start of the second quarter marking period coming up in a few weeks, we'll be able to start inviting some of those students uh, back more. Uh, but right now, again, based on some of our challenges with spacing and distancing, we are, we are not able to go beyond that for all students. Thank you, Tom. If there's, if there's no objections from my committee, I'd like to move 9.2 to the top of the agenda. Is there any objection to that? 9.2 is discussion about vertical alignment in high school preparedness between Wilbur McMahon School and Portsmouth High School. Um, so, uh, Joe, I, I guess this would be for you. You know, I, I ran for a school committee back in 2014 because my son, and, and I'll, I'll include Polly Allen here too, because uh, our kids, uh, our son and her daughter, uh, ha had some issues uh, in, in the special ed area, and we were really concerned about that in Wilbur and in Portsmouth. Um, it's pretty much why we ran. And then we found out Spanish was an issue in writing. Now, I, don't, I know we talked about Spanish already, and it's good to hear about uh, those positive steps. Can you just give us a little update and, and, and how kids with uh, IEPs from Little Compton and, and, and writing, the kids from Little Compton and writing, how they're doing? Well, based on the conversation that we had with our uh, English teachers in ninth grade and with our uh, civics teachers, it seems like the students in from Little Compton are doing just as well as the students from other parts. I mean, there are some variations and within within the band, uh, the kids are doing well. Uh, in general, in general, if you took the scores uh, back even 10 years ago, uh, in general, students are doing less reading and less writing. If you talk to any English teacher in the universe, they'll tell you there's a lot of distractions out there. The kids are not reading as much. It's a, it's a constant challenge to get kids to read uh, for the joy of reading. And I think that sometimes if you're not a good reader, the correlation is very high that you're probably not going to be a very good writer. And so one of the things that uh, some of the, the strategies that our teachers are using at the high school is to have them do more in-class writing in, her, in hopes and spurring them and giving them feedback so they can be more successful when they do research type of papers and things of that nature. Again, in conjunction for those kids that really struggle in, in areas of writing, um, like fluency or comprehension, uh, we have put in place the, the uh, intervention uh, teacher or literacy coach to help those students get supported and be, uh, to be able to be uh, proficient in those areas. Uh, but it's a, constant, uh, it's a constant work. It's a work in progress, but by, by the end of their four-year experience, many of the kids will improve. And that's what we're looking for in, in, with students is growth. And over the course of their four years, they're gonna grow and they're gonna be hopefully college and career ready. Uh, that's our that's our goal for every single student that comes in. So I think it, it, it's it's not um, it's a challenge in every at every grade level to get kids to really start reading more and to do more writing. Uh, writing uh, has been substituted, unfortunately, with a lot of uh, technology, which I'm not particularly fond of. I think uh, students will um, they will they will um, they're substituting a lot of the time that they would be writing in terms of doing, they think writing is texts and it's not. It requires a little bit more uh, structure to it. It requires a lot more thought and frankly, a lot more stamina. And I think in the last 10 years, we've seen a, a, a decay in that area. So our hope is to be able to work, working with our librarian uh, who is really inspiring students to, uh, to do more, to, to check out more books and to try to inspire them uh, to, to read more for, for pleasure because we know that's gonna improve their reading. We're also incorporating uh, for students that need to ramp up in terms of their programs for SAT preparation. We're doing both Saturday and in school during their learning centers, opportunities for kids to ramp up so they can be more successful on their SATs uh, relative to their writing. Because a lot of times it's just a matter of getting into the rhythm. If you get into the rhythm of writing, you're just gonna get better. And uh, a lot of our teachers are, 
are, are hopeful in, the, in having them right in the classroom. Uh, they can give them a lot more feedback. They can build up their confidence. They build up their stamina. And at the end of their experience at Portsmouth High School, uh, they'll, they'll be more prepared. Uh, because as you know, as you get older and you get to college, there's a lot more writing that's involved. Even in, at the upper levels of the high school, students are taking AP classes in, in English and, and whatnot. Uh, they have to write paragraphs and they have to write paragraphs that come under the guise of a, of a strong composition or an argument statement. And um, we try to, we try to encourage kids to do more and more writing and we're providing more where teachers are really uh, uh, enthusiastic about providing feedback. Um, so in terms of your initial question about special ed students, um, uh, we have, you know, special ed is very prescribed. We have support for students, again, through our intervention program. We still have a program called academic support for those students that need organizational skills, for those students that need uh, the little extra push at the end to get them over the finish line. We have something called an alternative learning program for students uh, that will get them through to graduation and beyond. Um, we're also, uh, as part of our state mandate, we're doing individual learning plans for students. And part of those individual learning plans are not just picking a career or, or, or reflecting upon what you want to do, but also uh, looking at, uh, with your school counselor, where you are in terms of your strengths and your weaknesses. And those are identified through some of the testing that we do and some of the authentic writing that they do um, in, within classes and having that conversation with uh, with their school counselors to try to uh, improve their uh, their performance. So I think there's a lot of pro, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Not every student's the same. And I think we have so many different tools at, at Portsmouth High School to support students in their learning that every student might need something a little bit different, but they're going to get what they need to be able to be successful um, uh, throughout their experience at the school and beyond. If, if I could follow up with that, I can um, give you a little bit more of an overview of some of the intervention work that we're currently doing at the high school and at um, all of the levels. So uh, Mr. Amaral referenced MTSS, so multi-tiered system of supports. So last year as a district, we did a great deal of work in really um, focusing in on developing the appropriate teams at each of our schools to be able to ensure that we're supporting all of our students that are non-responders, whether they're having um, academic issues or they're having um, social emotional uh, behavioral issues. So as, as a district and specifically as a high school team, um, Mr. Amaral has what we're calling an academic target team and a behavior target team. Um, those teams meet on a monthly basis as a whole team. And then the departments also meet and have conversations. And throughout that process, we're looking at the assessment data and we're having um, data-driven conversations about each of the students that are falling into that, um, that uh, intervention range. And we have criteria that we're using uh, and, and we follow the criteria and then we follow up with the appropriate interventions. So we have response to intervention plans that we put in place for our students. And then we have um, conversations on each of those students, whether we're working on a four week, six week, eight week cycle, but we're always coming back to the table and connecting. And I think that that work that we've do uh, that we've been doing, and um, as Mr. Amaral referenced, has really um, pushed our thinking as a school community. And we're able to look at each of the students on an individual basis and um, really customize their response to intervention plans in a way that will support all of our learners. Um, so, so specifically to. Um, that transition from a child that may be a non-responder and then may possibly need additional support, we, we take that RTI process really seriously so that if we do get to the table where a student is requiring additional supports through special education, we now have all of the documentation necessary um, to further support them. Thank you. Great. That's, Joe, I just have one other point. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. Joe, uh, you guys used to have a, uh, an outside agency. Her name was Kelly uh, O'Laughlin, Mrs. O, they would, the kids would call her. So if a child was getting bullied or if a child knew something uh, that was dangerous that was going on or had problems with drugs or alcohol or needed to talk with someone, they could talk to Kelly or Mrs. O privately. 
and even the parents wouldn't know uh, what those discussions were. So my understanding, she's no longer at, at Portsmouth, or that agency is no longer at Portsmouth. And if I'm right, how have you guys picked that up since that agency is gone? Well, we're still working with that agency. Uh, Mrs. Laughlin is no longer working at Portsmouth High School, but she, uh, we have a new person from the agency called Terry Gregg, who does magnificent work, is involved with the Rhode Island Prevention Coalition. Polly knows uh, she does a lot of good work, a uh, very uh, creative, uh, still has the offices in the uh, lower E-wing. Uh, any parent that has a concern or maybe has some issues, they should always refer their child uh, to go to see uh, Terry. Terry is a confidential counselor. Uh, she can't reveal information unless it has to do with the uh, um, uh, we release the information to the administration unless uh, it, it, the student's um, uh, in danger or if there's a critical issue involved. Uh, then, then otherwise, they're, they're, the confidentiality is, the confidentiality is held. Uh, they're doing they're doing right now this week a workshop for new students uh, to the district uh, ninth through twelve uh, for um, seeing if they can associate uh, groups uh, to be able to gel together and to try to make new friends. But it's a program that we take very seriously, but it, they, she doesn't work alone. Uh, she works with um, the school psychologist, which we have full time, as well as the school social worker and our guidance counselor. They form a team of student support services. As a matter of fact, on November 5th, our PHSO, what I would encourage any member of the um, Little Compton uh, parents who wish to participate, we meet uh, once a month. Uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, now we're meeting virtually, right? But it's an opportunity to uh, to learn more about the social services program. Uh, this next month, November 5th at 6.30, we have Lee Raposa, who is a Rhode Island uh, renowned uh, speaker in terms of suicide prevention, uh, who's gonna be speaking at 6.30, and we'll be sending out information about that. And then at seven, uh, our uh, so school uh, student services program team will be speaking to the PTO about all the services that they have. And this year, they're also opening up their own uh, website uh, for parents to be able to know all the different services that are available relative to social work, relative to psychology, um, agencies in the community that can provide support for students and their families if they need help. But clearly, uh, the school psychologist, school social worker, Terry Gregg, who's the student assistance counselor, who is the new Mrs. O, um, and also their guidance counselor, uh, uh, who also is available for students who need that support. You know, that's such a great program. You know, I had Kelly come to our school committee meeting. I don't remember if it's three years, two, four years. I don't know if anybody else remembers, but uh, she laid this all out, what she does. You know, and I really talked to her a lot during this time. Uh, you know, somehow we have to figure out if a kid's having a problem in Portsmouth High School, how they go see Terry Gregg without the other kids saying, oh, you know, where's he going? They go see Mrs. Gregg. Oh, he must be, you know, must be something wrong with him. Or when they call him down or, or they call her down to her office. So there's some way that they, they need to meet so these kids can say, listen, you know, this is what's bothering me. This is what's going on confidentially without them being you know, targeted or, you know, made fun of. Is there any, you guys made any progress with that? Yeah, she's in a, she's in a wing of the building that there is no, uh, where she's located, there's nothing around. <laughs> it's really out in the middle of uh, uh, Siberia. So the kids' anonymity is pretty well preserved. Uh, and that's where Mrs. O used to meet as well for the students. So there was very, um, there, she has a uh, tape over her window. Uh, there are no other classes around because we, we want to make sure that kids feel comfortable reaching out to an adult and making those connections, particularly if they're having social emotional problems that they need to preserve their uh, anonymity with their peers or with other teachers. Um, so I think that's very important. So we're continuing to do that. But if you'd like to have uh, our student services team or perhaps even Mrs. Mrs. Gregg come and address the uh, school committee, I'm sure she'd be more than willing to do so yeah. and speak about all the programs that she that's available to the to uh, to the, to the Little Compton students. Um, and uh, you might find that uh, some people might not be aware of all the wonderful work that she does. She's involved with Project Purple. She's involved with uh, doing a lot of uh, fun with things that kids can feel good about doing in school. And they always know that they have her, that she will always have their back 
uh, if they really are struggling with uh, sometimes substance abuse issues or, um, or other issues that uh, are affecting them in their ability to access the curriculum and to grow as a young adult because we're, Portsmouth High School is not just about uh, you know, academics. And certainly that's an important part of what we do, but we also want kids to grow to be healthy, mature adults. And the way to do that is to count on the adults that are around them to be able to help them when they need help. You know, that's such a great resource that you have there. You know, if a kid wants to, you know, find out, you know, what does vaping really do? I mean, I know they can go online or whatever, but if they just want to ask, how should I, you know, act in the situation when someone passes me a vape, you know, what, what do I say? What do I do? You know, and it, it and little Compton parents and Portsmouth parents need to know there's someone in that school that has that answer, you know? So the kids don't have to worry about, uh, what am I going to do? Or, so somehow we have to connect those kids that need that help yeah. with anonymity. Uh, and, you know, and hopefully, you know, I just think such, I know Kelly was awesome and I'm sure this, this uh, Terry Gregg is uh, really good also, but uh, you know, you have somebody there to help. It's right sitting in the building. Uh, so anyway, go ahead, Paula, your hands up. Go ahead. I cannot say enough wonderful things about Terry. Um, I've known her for maybe, maybe a year she's been in that position or so. Um, she brings some amazing creativity. She seems to get the kids. She's fun. She's professional. Um, she was willing to go on some, I don't know if it happened because of COVID, but she was willing to go on some overnight at Alton Jones. Um, she's bustling from one meeting to another. Uh, she is willing to share her resources and put on a collective thinking cap with other people. I, I totally admire Terry. She's a, um, a wonderful student assistance counselor. I, I highly support her. All right, so I have my first hand up which is very exciting for me to see a hand up there. Uh, I like all my gadgets. And we just uh, allowed Mike Rocha, permitted to speak. Thank you, uh, IT man. Go ahead, Mike. Mr. Amaral, I have a follow-up question, if I would, in regards to the special education. Um, everything that you just spoke about tonight, is all of your resources available to all of the students and not just for the Portsmouth students? So everything that Portsmouth offers for special education, is that available to the Little Compton students as well? If a student has a special ed need uh, and they're get, they have an IEP, then yes, the student resources are there available to, the, to, to Little Compton students as well as Portsmouth students or students from their surrounding communities. We don't discriminate between uh, where they come from. If they, need, they have an IEP and they have a service, we provide those services for all students. Okay, I just wanna clarify, just make sure I understand. So every service that Portsmouth offers for their students is available to our students as well. Maybe, maybe uh, Dr. Kenworthy to, can mention if there's anything beyond. No, I was, uh, was gonna just elaborate a little more, Ms. Rocha, yeah, any, um, <clears throat> You know, part of the agreement is uh, any any in-house, if you would, special education or any other service uh, that, that we offer is available to all students. Uh, I think the only exception would, would be in the case of a little competent student if a student has to attend an out, outside placement. So, you know, in some um, rare circumstances, uh, you know, that, that has to happen. So I think at that point, you know, you know little, little competent just kind of takes over. Uh, overseeing um, that aspect, but any, anything in-house within Portsmouth High School is available to all students. If I may, that is correct. That's a great question, uh, Mike. The, we're part of a consortium, a collaborative, um, Newport County Regional Special Ed, as you know, and so whatever the in-house staff on site at Portsmouth High School, if, if, if that cannot support a student's needs, then Newport County Regional takes over and does the case management for that student. But that's the only in instance. Specialized services, specialized supports out of district placements. Okay, thank you. Rita Canahan has a hand up, go ahead, Rita. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm so glad to know about the social support services and since we've mentioned COVID and it is so forefront. Um, how are the kids at Fort Smith High doing through COVID? Are you seeing any trends? Um, 
you know, just how are they faring since you're here and you can give us a firsthand update. Thank you. I, th I think kids are excited about being in school for the most part. I think they are motivated by seeing some of their friends in school and it gives them a sense of normalcy. Uh, I think they like to see their teachers, particularly freshmen. Uh, they really want to get to know who are these teachers because remember, no, none of the freshmen know the teachers. If you're an upperclassman, you might've had them once or twice, but if you're a freshman and, and they, they are, um, they're getting to know the teachers, they get to know the system, they get to know the expectation. I think with some of the other upperclassmen, I think uh, there's a little bit of feeling like, you know, uh, I wish that we were here all, all the, every day. Uh, I wish we had a full gamut of sports. I wish we were able to uh, have uh, the mock trial in real, real life. I wish we were doing a play right now and do the drama. I wish that we had the marching band because that's a lot of fun and they were able to connect with other kids that way. So. Uh, like everyone else in in the um, like everyone else in in the community, uh, Portsmouth High School is no different. Except we are offering that opportunity for them to come together uh, two days a week uh, to be able to meet with their teachers in real life, to be able to meet with each other. Uh, but I think there's still some struggle. I mean, if you ask a typical kid uh, and you take a kid at random in the hallway and say, "Hey, how do you how do you like uh, you know being here at school?" I think. Uh, you might have got some grunts and some things a couple of years ago, last year. But this year, they actually seem to be very excited and thankful that they have an opportunity to come to school every day, which is sort of not always the case at 7.30 in the morning. So I really feel like um, the kids are really appreciative of the fact that they get to come back to school every day. We're very fortunate, knock on wood, that we don't have a, an outbreak uh, so far uh, in, our, in our high school um, in terms of COVID. So we're very fortunate that way as compared to our neighboring communities. Um, and we're, we've taken a lot of precautions and a lot of work went into making sure that we're safe and we keep our distance. Uh, the one thing that, um, that students, uh, like I said, they think they're mostly um, wishing that they had was, you know, the homecoming, the, uh, the homecoming dance, uh, the, all those things that are traditional uh, and a rite of passage for many of the kids at the high school. So we're uh, staying within safety guidelines, but we're trying to provide them alternatives and slowly but surely as, as we develop throughout the course of the year, we'll, we'll be able to open more events. Some of them are gonna be partially virtual um, in terms of clubs and activities, but maybe some other, uh, um, some, other acti some other events we might be able to open in full force. So. We're hoping and optimistic that we might be able to do that. But in general, I would say the general disposition of the students is, is, is fairly positive. So thank you, Joe. So uh, anyone in attendance, I'm gonna try to wrap this up with Portsmouth so they don't have to sit through a long meeting. So if you have any questions, raise your hand. But I'm gonna ask uh, one more, Joe. Um, you've been the principal now how many years? This is my fifth year. So your fifth year. School. So you've seen five years of Little Compton students come through and you talk with your teachers, and, and if it's just me and you talking here, uh, you know, Little Compton, we're trying to do everything we can to prepare our kids. Um, what have you seen that we can do better to prepare our kids for high school at Portsmouth? I think you do a phenomenal job with, with students, and I know that nothing is perfect, and they're always looking for improvement, but I think you're doing a phenomenal job of creating students that are respectful, that are kind, and that are prepared to meet the challenges of, of, uh, of Portsmouth High School. Uh, you know, we're a top three school in many categories, um, and we had students last year go to all the major Ivy League schools in the area, and we have students that were prepared to go into the workforce. So we have enough breadth that students can find their path. But in terms of the one thing I think that might be helpful, because we are a data-driven community, so we look at data and we want to improve based on that data. It's not enough just to say that we're doing a good job. We want to make sure that we can prove it. And one of the things that would be helpful is if, if, the, uh, if the eighth graders can take the PSAT eighth grade. There's a PSAT eight and nine, but if at the beginning of the eighth grade year, and I might, this might not be the best year to do that, but if the eighth graders can take the PSAT eight and nine at the beginning of their eighth grade year, and as we, they move into their beginning of the uh, ninth grade years, the students would take the PSAT 8-9 again, 
then we can see what kind of growth in, in those, we can compare those two tests as, to, as a predictor, how, the, how much work we need to do with that particular student to prepare them for their SATs and beyond. Um, that would also give us an indication if that student, along with their grades and along with their work performance, needs that little extra help so they don't fall through the cracks. We started doing the PSAT uh, 9, this is our second year, and it's really helped us to see over time how students are being prepared for the SATs. As you know, why is that important? Because if the students wanna to go to certain colleges, they need to have certain, um, they need to have certain scores on their SAT, and we wanna give those students as many opportunities to get into schools that they want. And if we can start off with their eighth grade experience taking that test, and then go over to their ninth grade year and taking uh, that test again, then we can see a trajectory of what, how we need to provide supports for those students and know where they need to go in order to be successful. So we're going to be asking that of uh, Portsmouth Middle School as well. Uh, and I think if Little Compton wanted to do that, it'll give you more information and we can compare the growth over the course of a year um, for their eighth grade experience. And it'll give us a platform as to how far uh, more we need to push uh, those individual students to higher levels. So I appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. Just a couple of quick things. You know, this committee uh, some years ago, and, and uh, I spearheaded a survey of all our, our Portsmouth kids. Uh, we've done it for three years in a row, and I make them write down what uh, Wilbur could do better and how we could prepare better for them. And it always came back more writing. Uh, Spanish was, was big and a little bit of math. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. We're not going to be able to do that survey this year because of, of COVID. But I do find it uh, interesting uh, that you say our, our kids uh, are come with kindness and they're respectful. I, I, I see, you know, to reflect on that, you know, our, our staff here in, in, in the community, you know, it's kind of a school that you know, it is kind, it is respectful, and, you know, they're treated that way. So it's, it's interesting for you uh, when I asked you what you thought of our kids over the past five years, the first two things you said were kindness and respectful. Um, so that, that kind of made me think that it's kind of the environment that we kind of had here where it's, you know, uh, a, a lovey type of, of place. Uh, anyway, I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but, um, I think all right. Is there anything else from the committee or, or, or out in the audience for our friends from Portsmouth? Now would be a time to do that. All right, I don't see anything. I was gonna ask the assistant superintendent what she does during the day. What, do you, what is your, real quickly, what does your day consist of? Um, I know what Ken Worthy does and I know what the principal does. What, what do you do I, today? I absolutely love that question. What don't <laughs> I do? Um, I think a little bit of what Dr. Ken Worthy and what Mr. Amaral are doing. Um, uh, it's, you know, the role of assistant superintendent certainly is, um, has been unique this year. So I went into this position knowing that we were entering uh, our COVID um, era. And, and that all being said, I finally feel like I'm able to stop focusing on reopening our schools and start having those very important conversations with our teachers and our principals and um, department heads and coaches and really just ensuring that the teaching and learning is happening, it's authentic, and that we're working as a collaborative team to, again, ensure that all of our students are meeting um, our standards. So, so Patrick, I, I am constantly in schools having conversations with, with teachers and teams, and um, I, I spend a, a good amount of my week having conversations with families, especially uh, right now, just being able to talk through um, some of the situations that have been going on with some of our non-responders, but it's just a very hands-on job. So thanks. Well, good. I'm glad that. you're busy. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you're busy. He's busy. All right. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any other hands up. Any other questions? I don't see any. So thank you, Tom, Elizabeth, and Joe. You're more thank than you. happy to stay for the rest of this wonderful yeah. school committee meeting. I don't want to stay for that. But <laughs> if I see you, if I see you go, uh, I understand why. All right, well, thank you again for having us tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very coming. much. Thank you. Thank you. No. Okay, so that brings us to 5-1 professional development plan for 2020-2021 school year. And this is under the principal spotlight. So the spotlight is on you, Principal Whip. 
Hello. Um, I do have a slide to share that just um, out, outlines the focus of professional development for this year. Um, so there were five key elements that will be the focus items for this year, and these were um, referenced in our reopening plan. We've, we are focusing on our um, first year of our candidacy phase for international baccalaureate. We did have a um, training session in September, and then we'll continue with job embedded training with Mrs. Cole working with our middle school teachers throughout the school year. Um, a huge focus this year will be on educational technology. We've really upped our technology, um, up to the hardware and up to the software, and now we just need to develop everybody's skills and keep them moving along. Um, Mr. Gabriel and I have been spending countless hours trying to figure out how best to roll things out to teachers and to really um, make sure that they uh, have the tools they need to work in this largely virtual world and um, to really use the um, pieces of educational software that we're utilizing this year. Um, it's been a challenge, so it's been a lot of work, and um, but I think we're making a lot of progress and um, it's been really gratifying to see the um, teachers working with kids that are at home and kids that are at school and you know they're all part of the same classroom and it's um, it's going very well. It's really neat to see you know kids on the big screen in the front of the room um, chatting back and forth with their classmates in, in class. Um, we will also be focusing on mental health first aid and restorative practices. Those are both, those are continuations of work that we started last year and we want to keep the forward momentum going. Um, we will continue doing curriculum work, particularly working on the health curriculum this year and uh, with all of our middle school curriculum areas, aligning them with IB practices. And then finally, we are working on intercultural development of our students and staff. So we're continuing the work that we started last year, moving it into this year. Um, some staff members will be participating in the, the book club um, that will be happening within the next few weeks. Um, we also are, are really thinking about all matters of diversity um, and intercultural um, needs that we're really using our social emotional learning times, our open circle times and our advisory times to mindfully um, focus on elements as they come up and, and to make sure that our kids are exposed to a, a variety of topics, um, transgender issues, issues of diversity. Um, it, we've really been focusing on weaving things in um, appropriately throughout the grade levels. And it's, I'm really proud of our kids. I'm really proud of our staff. I think they've really risen to the occasion. Um, Mrs. Miller has largely taken the lead in um, kind of journaling our journey through this so that we have um, some focus items that we can look at of what we've been doing and what we will continue to do so that we know what we can improve on. Um, we are always looking for various programs that we can bring in for our kids. We had brought in push, push to Learning last year, and I've had some preliminary talks with Dr. Dias Mitchell about perhaps exploring that for this year. And also, there's just a wealth of, of different resources out there that we can tap into, and we have um, LCEF is definitely interested in partnering with us um, around issues of equity and diversity. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Principal Whip? I know we still have some attendees still here. Just raise your hand if you guys want to ask us, uh, have a statement or you want to say something during our conversation. You don't have to wait for public input. I'll be checking. Okay, Superintendent, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> you, got, you got four things. That's okay. Uh, Number one is human resources update. Go ahead. Okay, well, we welcomed Mrs. Jennifer Giles. She's the new reading specialist. She brings valuable experience working as a reading specialist in Tiverton and at the Paul Cuffey School. She joined us last week. Uh, and she's quite impressed with our very ambitious reopening <laughs> with all of our ed tech and our PD plan for the year. We're still looking to increase our substitute teacher and TA rosters. Openings are posted on School Spring for anyone interested. If anyone is out there who has relatives or friends who are looking for a part-time gig, uh, please contact Ms. Sedgwick or Ms. Whip 
or Ms. Fitzgerald or me. Um, we will welcome you with open arms. Okay, do you want to go to 6.2 now? Patrick? Hello? Hi, Patrick, sorry about that. I was on mute. We're down to <laughs> 6 2. We're down. I'm sorry. Rhode Island yeah. Department of Education visit from Commissioner Angelica Infante Green. Okay, Angelica Infante Green visit, uh, visited us Friday, October 2nd in, I want to say early September. Um, Deputy Commissioner Anna Riley did contact us and said that the commissioner would like to visit and um, that the commissioner, as well as the deputy commissioner, they, they were very impressed with our reopening plan, with our creativity, and obviously the tents. The tents have made it into a couple of um, press conferences. <laughs> and uh, the commissioner said she would be, she would arrive around um, 8.30 and she was there at 8.20. And so she got to watch some of our kids um, disembark for, you know, from the buses and she was struck by our kids' fashion sense. We had kids with the cutest different, different types of masks, cutest socks. Um, it was a Friday to beat the band in terms of fashion statements among all of our kids. And so she truly enjoyed that. And then she met with our seventh and eighth grade teaching team and our administration. Our IT director was there and um, Carolyn Cedric was there just to take pictures. Um, and it was a really good visit. She said that we were very special, you know, not better, not worse, just different. Um, those are her words that, you know, we had a, a lot of resources that other communities don't have, like the tents, the beautiful green space, but we are also a rural community that can at times be a bit isolated. And so she was so perceptive. Um, she asked really good questions. She told us different ways that she could help us and for us to reach out. Um, we took a lot of pictures. She peeked into every single, she wanted to stay outdoors and she peeked into every single elementary classroom. It was really cute. And, and the kids and the teachers right at 8.30 were already on. You know, They were um, engaged in learning immediately. Uh, she was impressed obviously with our technology plan. That did come up with the deputy commissioner um, about a month ago that we had a very ambitious reopening regarding technology, our, uh, the Promethean technology being the center of our reopening plan. And I have to thank Jonathan Gabriel, I know he's here, there he is, um, for finding ways to take a very complicated um, technology framework and every day tweaking it and fine tuning it so that every teacher can hit his, her, or their mark um, without, you know, a lot of time and a lot of energy being wasted on those front-loaded pieces of um, engaging our distance learners and our kids on site. So, yeah, it was a really good visit, and we gave her a swag bag. Uh, she loved that. We gave her our building-wide read that all the teachers and staff members are reading, the uh, distance learning playbook. We gave her a Wilma McMahon um, mask. We gave her one of our um, lovely water bottle that you can infuse the water with vegetables and fruits and herbs and so forth. She loved that. Um, Principal Whip, what else was in the swag bag? Truly, she was, she was like a kid in a candy store, you know, uh, and it came in a stadium bag which is perfect, um, and it had the Wilbur McMahon insignia, and she stayed for a good hour, and then she and I walked around for a bit and, and just sort of talked, educator to educator, and as we uh, did that, we bumped into one of our dads who was running in to give his daughter her cell phone, and he also happened to be on a re our, our reopening committee, and that was Ed Burnett, and so um, we conversed with him, and talked about the planning process for reopening. Um, it exceeded my expectations in terms of her time, attention, 
the intentionality of her questions. Um, and she really, she had never been to Little Compton, so she loved it. And the assistant that was with her had never been. Um, I think they parked in the wrong spot, but I think we fixed that. And um, I hope she comes back. It was really a good visit. Right. I'm thank sure. you so much. I thank you. I just wanted to real quickly say you mentioned our IT guy sitting next to me over here sharing his pizza with me. Uh, uh, I mean, this guy's, I mean, outstanding. And, you know, we say how much the teachers have done and they have and how much administration has done and they have and, and parents getting their kids ready and the kids. I mean, this guy is really, everything's on his back and there's only one guy. Yes. And uh, he's good. And uh, he's good. I think he's at the point now. I don't know how long you've been here, six months. I don't know how long he's taken for granted. And you know, you know, you're good when you're just taken for granted. Exactly. So, uh, you know, parents, if you ever see him or anybody else, I mean, you're not that he needs a raise or anything, but I'm just saying he's good. He's good at what he does. <laughs> I concur. And we can say it in Swedish fish, which is his guilty pleasure. Um, so, uh, oh, do you have a bag right there? Is that Jonathan's bag? It's his bag. He loves, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> the mom and me just wants to rip it out of his hands, but that's okay. Um, sure. Yes, I concur, it's Jonathan. Six three. Yeah, six three. Update, think... on Wilbur, yeah, update on Wilbur. Update on Wilbur McMahon oh. School, 2021, hey. 2021 awesome. school year reopening. I think our reopening has it was very ambitious. Go big or go home. Okay, come on, we're little Compton, but. We go big. Um, we are at 86% students right now in person. We have 30 students at home doing distance learning. We have five new enrollments, five the past few weeks. We have six students recently who returned from distance learning to full in person. And so parents feel that we are doing everything in our power to keep our building safe for as long as we can. Uh, let's face it, there is a surge around us. And I live in Massachusetts. The surge is here. The surge is in, in Rhode Island. But as the uh, governor said today, schools uh, are pretty much holding their own. And it is because we are, uh, we are regulated communities. We have policies. Thank you, um, Ed Bowen. Uh, we have policies that regulate every minute of our day. And that includes mask wearing, social distancing, although um, you know, among the adolescents, that's been more difficult than some of us anticipated. Um, as the commissioner was leaving, you know, I had a, a cluster of eighth graders <laughs> walk by us and I was kids, you know. Um, yeah. So, but aside from some of those developmental um, impulses that our older kids have just to sort of um, socialize and be near each other, we're doing everything humanly possible to keep our building safe, to keep our students and staff members safe. And I can't thank nurse done enough. I have to go and update our um, dashboard. We've, we were at, I believe six tested. I think we're up to about 10 people tested and only one was positive, um, as you know. And that was a, an isolated case. Um, so, the reopening has not been without some, um, you know, some wiggles and wags, but I think we're on course now and we are, you know, getting into a nice trot um, and we hope to stay in person for as long as possible. Our kids are filled with joy. You can see it. You can feel their smiles underneath their masks. They're incredibly cooperative when it comes to mask wearing, hand washing, and antibacterial. Uh, incredibly um, compliant when it comes to social distancing, except for you know some of the adolescents that we constantly have to stay on. Um, but it's not as bad um, as all that. But I'd say our reopening on a scale of one to 10, I give it an 8.5. Um, and we've never opened in a pandemic before. We've never had to wear masks all day for six and a half, eight, nine hours. Um, I think we're doing okay. Thank you. Six, four, influenza flu clinics at Wilbur McMahon School. 
Well, a few of us were frozen out of that flu, uh, flu clinic. <laughs> You're looking at some of us because we didn't read the fine print and figure out that we had to pre-register. So I will have to wait until the next flu clinic. The flu clinic on Tuesday, October 6th at four, from four to seven was an unmitigated success. And I believe pre-registrations were maxed out. I think, I know I've lost Jean Dunn to be on here somewhere. I can't see her if we could let her in. Um, I think we maxed out at 180. And the next flu clinic is Thursday, uh, November 5th. And once again, it is 4 to 7 p.m. And I will pre-register for that one. And I think the chair forgot to pre-register as did a few staff members who were on this Zoom. So uh, COVID has made it necessary for pre-registering um, for to pre-register for, for our flu clinics for various reasons. I saw people lined up, social distancing all the way outside. Um, it went off without a hitch. And Jean, are you here? Jean Dunn? I'm here. Hi. Hi, Jean. Was it 160 or 180? How did we max out? Uh, we had 242 people register. Right. 188 uh, were given. So okay. I'm not sure what the, um, what the max was on the number for registration for this time. Okay. Uh, but I thought it was very, very, very successful and um, it went really, really well. And I would like to thank um, Fire Chief Petrin and the Citizens Emergency Response Team, the CERT team of Little Compton, because those uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, all um, showed up, probably about eight of them, uh, to help out. And it really made the night go very, very smoothly. And it was a nice practice for the next one, which is on November 5th. So. I appreciate um, everybody's help in that aspect. Jean, I'm just curious, did you have more people this year than previous years? Um, it was a little bit more. I think uh, in the past we've had up to 175. Um, we, like I said, we had 242 registered. Some said that they, and they sort of gave me a heads up that they had another commitment. They had soccer games. They had been in CBS and got it then. So. Anyway, I'm hoping that that uh, more people will be able to take advantage of the November 5th one. So we'll see. Okay, thank you. Make sure you go online and sign up. Yes, that's thank important you. to know. You have to register online. Schoolflu.com. Schoolflu.com. Great, thanks. Okay, 7.1, finance report. Mr. McNamee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we're wrapping up uh, uh, fiscal uh, year 2020 with a surplus of 96,524. Uh, that will uh, bring a accumulated surplus going forward into FY21 of $106,000 uh, as we move into uh, FY21. Uh, FY21 is just beginning, uh, you know, we've only been in school uh, a few weeks at this point in time through the end of September. Uh, a lot of bills are still trickling in. We haven't gotten our first tuition bill from Portsmouth yet. Uh, we actually just got our first transportation bill in today. Uh, a lot of our out of district tuition bills we haven't got in. So uh, we haven't uh, got a read on where we're going to wind up um, FY21, but uh, over the next couple of months, we'll, we'll be able to solidify that. There are some concerns, obviously, with uh, going forward in FY21. Uh, the revenues uh, clearly would be a concern. Uh, the state legislature has not acted on the uh, state education budget. It doesn't appear like they're going to get to it until probably after the first of the year. Uh, we may be in line to look at some additional funding if there is additional stimulus funds to come in, um, but, when, but nobody's sure what's going to happen at this point in time. So we have to be cautious in terms of uh, what we're projecting in, in terms of our overall revenue. Uh, on the expense side, we have some areas of concern, um, certainly on salaries. We're having uh, increases in the cost of substitute teachers. And, and TAs, um, 
And uh, that's across the state. There's not only a shortage um, across the state, but we're seeing those rates being driven up uh, from where they were to uh, levels that we're probably looking at uh, in, in terms of being in that 135 to 150 per day now going up from 100, uh, 110 a day. So we're seeing a little bit of an increase in terms of the cost in that area too. And, and naturally we're um, spending a little bit more money on our um, building maintenance in terms of the uh, um, ventilation system, making sure that all filters are updated uh, all the sanitation that we're uh, uh, we're buying in um, uh, for the for the building, so we'll probably see uh, a little bit of an increase in, in those costs. Uh, we're hoping to fund uh, some of those from our COVID relief funds, but um, uh, uh, hopefully we'll get some more of those funds to help us out in that regard. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to dip into that surplus uh, as we move forward. So, so that uh, concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Mr. McNamee? Anyone? Thank you. Committee reports, 8-1 Portsmouth School Committee liaison report. Rita? I don't know what I can add after having the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, and uh, the principal. But uh, yeah, things are going well. And some of what you're saying, Mr. McNamee, about the, those expenses, um, every school district suffering this same way. I hear the same thing. So, but I was very happy to hear and encouraged to hear that the kids are happy to be back. Those who are back are very happy to be together. So that was, that was encouraging news. Thank you, Rita. Social Emotional Learning Committee report. Who gives that report? Sonia, is that you? I can. Um, we did have our first social emotional learning committee meeting last week. Um, it was, we had it at night, which is one of the first times we've done it in the evening, was well attended. We had some nice conversations about possible um, speakers that we could bring in and um, different um, things that we can try out this year. We talked about the programs that we're doing and what it's gonna look like this year. And what am I leaving out, Mrs. Allen? One of the things that I really enjoyed from that you shared was your virtual um, library. I have oh. shared that idea now um, with a couple of my colleagues. Um, I think it's terrific. Yeah, it's just a PowerPoint presentation that has, it's like a virtual bookshelf. So when you click on the picture of the book, it takes you to like a YouTube um, video so that if, if in the course of distance learning, when we might not have access to our libraries and the resources we normally have, we would be able to tap into that as something for either students, teachers, or families. I liked how you could um, tailor it to um, open circle or the needs of different age groups, classrooms, what, whatever you are in need of. Thank and, you, lady. Yep, we I think that's about it. We're going to meet, we, we, we have scheduled meetings monthly, so we'll be able to report back to you. Thank you. Recreation, town recreation committee report. I do have a report. The tennis courts uh, were. Uh, the final court, the, the west is the westest most court was just lined for pickleball. So now there are four pickleball line courts and regular maintenance maintenance was done on the court also this week. So the courts have been spruced up and lined. Eight four policy subcommittee report and appointment of members. I would like to remove Lori Dias Mitchell and Carolyn Sedgwick from our policy committee. Mr. Anderson, am I good doing that? Yes, you are. Thank you. 8-5, Wellness Committee Liaison Report. Jana. Yeah, we have our first uh, Wellness Committee meeting uh, next Tuesday at 3.15. <clears throat> we'll be focusing on um, mental and physical health during the COVID crisis, and where we are with that. Thank you, Rita. I'm Jana. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jana. I'm looking at Rita. I was looking at Rita. <laughs> Oasis subcommittee report. 
Is that the principal? Polly. Polly. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't have a report from him. I don't think he's been in since the last month. I'm not no, sure. I don't really think there's been a, that there. It's. It's been being used, but it's like, there hasn't been a lot of activity as far as maintenance work in the past month. I think they have a plan for the fall. I'll see if he can give some kind of report for next month. Great, thank you. All right, discussion items. We've already discussed 9-1 and 9-2. And we are on 9-3 discussion about shared services agreement. I might be able to answer this one. I am on an email thread that we are having a meeting tomorrow. Is that still on, Superintendent? I believe um, Bill Moore did get back to us that he cannot attend um, today. He, he got back to us with that information. So we could still meet at five. The rest of the shared services team, which would be Mr. Musha, Mr. Texera, you, me, um, John, Gabriel, he is a part of the shared services agreement. We share his services um, with the town. So we're not, we're not sure if we should meet alone or without him. We, we took for granted that he would be there tomorrow at five and he has canceled. Okay, so we're, we're trying to get a meeting. We get everybody there, gotcha. Any, any other discussion on that? Okay, nine four discussion about November regular school committee meeting date. Uh, if anyone does not know, our next meeting is November 4th due to the holiday on the 14th. So we will have an election on the 3rd so on the 4th, this committee will still be intact. So you will have to go to another meeting, Mr. Bowen, Ms. Porter. So don't think it's over yet, because it's not. Unless we have a discussion tonight and we decide to not have that meeting and have it another day, perhaps the 13th, perhaps the 15th. So I think I'd start with Councillor Anderson, is there anything you could give us uh, to help us out with this, John? This issue comes up all the time in communities. Um, in some communities, for example, uh, new members are not sworn in until um, January. Um, so you have people that are holdovers. Um, it's really up to the committee as to when they want to schedule um, their meetings. I'm not sure, given what I'm hearing in the media, that we may have all our election results certified even by the 13th or the 15th. Um, so I'm not sure that waiting to the 13th or the 15th is the best option, um, but I defer to the school committee um, in terms of how they wish to schedule their meetings. Any discussion from the members on this one? Not seeing any, I guess we're gonna have a meeting on the fourth. Alrighty, nine five, discussion about administrator, administrator's goals, for the 2021 school year. Is this Carolyn Sedgwick? Does she, is she here with us? Yes, I'm here. Is this one in your, uh, coming, is this one yours? Um, it could be as it relates to uh, contracts, administrative contracts. Hmm both of which and I'm talking for the superintendent and the principal state within that the school committee will approve goals for the ensuing school year. Given that this year is fraught with many unknowns, uh, the, the school committee has not as of yet um, discussed goals. So we wanted to just be fully transparent in the fact that usually by now we are discussing goals and just have a discussion with the committee as to the um, practicality of that at this time. So you mentioned the word practicality. Would this be practical that you send us the goal to send the committee the goals of the superintendent and principal and allow us some weeks to get back to you on, on uh, some potential goals or future goals and you can put that together and at the next meeting we can come up with some goals? Of course, yes. Is there any other ideas from the committee on how you want to handle that? I stole that from the last year. So that's what we did last year. 
So I didn't just make that one up. So we'll await your email, Carolyn, on the goals to refresh our memory. And we'll report back to you what we uh, think the future goal should be. And then we'll discuss it next meeting. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. 10 1 public input on topics for future or topics for future agenda. So it's time for the public. If anyone wants to raise their hand, now would be the time. And I will keep looking to see if there's any hands up like I have been. If I see a quick one go up, I'll, I'll get to you folks. So it's not shut down. You can always speak here. All right, 11 1. Consider, discuss, and vote to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Little Compton School Committee and the Little Compton Teachers Association via roll call. What do you folks want me to do with this one? Superintendent? I say we go into executive session and um, access the correct version. The correct version was sent to my personal email, L-A-U-R-I. E D I but yeah, very long personal email and it got sort of stuck in there. So I'm taking full responsibility for that version never making it to Mariah. Um I found it in my personal email. Okay. So John Anderson, do I need a vote on that? Can't hear you on mute. You're on mute. Uh, you need to take a vote to go back into executive session. That's what I'm saying. So I just need to take a vote to go into back into executive session, not specifically on 11 1. Um, let's do it specifically on 11 1. On 11 1. Okay. So I will take, I, I need to make a motion. Or I just have to say we're going back into executive session. You need to, take, you need to entertain a motion to go okay. back. All right, so exactly. Patrick, can we yeah. can we table it, get through the rest of the agenda, and then go into executive session? I don't think so. From what I'm hearing from my attorney, I think Polly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a motion to go into executive session, reconvene into executive session on 11-1. Consider right. the vote to so, approve the minimum uh, agreement to Little Compton School Committee and the Little Compton Teachers Association. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any now discussion, Polly? Go ahead. You have discussion. Okay. Ahead. So, uh, my concern is that all the public that's here um, is going to just have to wait for us to go to executive session now in the middle of this meeting until we come back. No, I'm not going in now, John. Am I? I I'm going to make a motion. You, with all due respect, you just Mrs. Allen is correct. Okay. You just made a motion okay. to go in now. Okay. So I'm going to withdraw my motion. Ed, can you withdraw your uh, second? Okay. All right, so I'm going to, can I table it and come back to the, uh, at, it, at the end of the meeting? Yes, you may. All right, I'm going to table 11-1. 11-2, consider, discuss, and vote to approve memorandum agreement to the Little Compton School Committee, Little Compton Educational Support Personnel via roll call. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a roll call, please, Mariah. Holly Allen? Aye. Ed Bowen? Aye. Jenna Porter? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Aye. Patrick McHugh? Aye. That motion passes unanimously. 11-3, consider, discuss, and vote to amend the visitor's policy via roll call. It's a second read. Edward? Uh, do you want a recap or do you just want a motion? I'm going to go with the recap. The recap is just that uh, this will require visitors to wear masks uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic. It's a good idea, Ed. Okay, I'm gonna go, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> Can I have a vote via roll call, please? Holly Allen? Aye. Ed Bowen? Aye. Jenna Porter? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Aye. <clears throat> Patrick McHugh? Aye, that motion passes unanimous. 11-4, consider discussing vote to amend the non-resident student policy via roll call. This is a first read. This is a first read. Um, the amendment is, is specific to tuition um, students um, and it would provide that uh, transcripts and final grades will not be provided to tuition paying students until such time 
is that tuition has been paid in full. So that's an addition to the policy, just that one line. Correct. And only for tuition paying students. Any uh, discussion on questions on that one? All right, so we'll see that again on the fourth for a vote. 11-5, consider, discuss, and vote to approve any requests for information for administration and or legal counsel via roll call. Do I, do I have any requests for our professionals? Not seeing any. I will consider, okay, now I'm gonna go back to, do I, bleh, do I, I'm, I have to keep this open, this open, all right? I can't adjourn this meeting, John. That's correct. All right, I am going to uh, make a motion to go into executive session on item 11.1. .1. Skinner, this, consider discuss the vote to approve the memorandum agreement to the Little Compton School Committee, Little Compton Teacher Association. Do I have a second? Second. Second, any other discussion on this? Can I have a vote via roll call, please? Holly Allen. Aye. Ed Bowen. Aye. Jenna Porter. Aye. Rita Kennehan. Aye. Patrick McHugh. Aye, so now we're gonna pop back into executive session, discuss this and come back out and, and vote on it and then close our open meeting. Thank you for everyone that attended. Thank you, I'll see you in the other meeting guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to reconvene into open session. Want uh, to know no notification? There were no votes taken in the executive session. I would like to, if there's no uh, objections, I'd like to move to 11.1. .1. Anderson, you good with that? I was just, I'm sorry, I was just lying, logging back on. Okay, I just reconvened. No votes were taken, and I moved to 11.1. .1. You okay? Yeah. Have you moved to seal the minutes of executive session? Do I have to seal it now? Yes. Seal it now before I go to 11 one Yes. Okay. I'll uh, consider a motion to seal the minutes of executive session. Do I have a motion? No moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Holly Owen. Aye. Ed Bowen. Aye. Jana Porter. Jana Porter. Sorry, I. Um, Rita Kennehan. I. Patrick McHugh. I. Okay, I'm going to go to 11.1. .1. Consider, discuss, and vote to approve a memorandum agreement between the Little Compton School Committee and the Little Compton Teachers Association. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Do we have discussion on this item? 
Any discussion? Not seeing any discussion. Roll call, please. Holly Allen? Aye. Ed Bowen? Aye. Jenna Porter? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Aye. Patrick McHugh? Aye. That motion passes unanimous. I'll consider a motion to adjourn. So move. I have a second. Second. Roll call, please, Mara. Holly Allen? Aye. Ed Bowen? Aye. Jenna Porter? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Aye. Patrick McHugh? Aye. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your patience today. Appreciate it. See you all soon. Thank you. See you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Right. Get your flu shot. I got mine.